Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. I hope you've been enjoying the 12 home theater tours that we've been doing over the past several days. We've still got plenty more to go. I filmed each one of those in four days. We did 12 home theater tours in four days and I actually visited a 13th one, which I'll talk about, but we ran out of time and didn't get a chance to film that. But I hope you've been enjoying it. If you did, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we've got about four more that I'll be sharing in the next four days. And so this series has been honestly way bigger than I anticipated. I had no idea when I flew up there to Wisconsin and Illinois. Thank you for the person in the comments that pointed out I've been pronouncing it Illinois and it's actually Illinois. So I'm gonna add the S from now on. But uh, I've had a blast in Illinois and also in Wisconsin, filming those, sharing these incredible home theaters to you guys, giving you opportunity just to see how other people have done it, the decisions that they've made in their, their rooms, and just kind of giving you some inspiration on what you might be able to do in your own setup. And so today we're gonna be talking about Scott's home theater. I featured his earlier this morning. And so if you haven't checked out that video, I'll have a link to it at the end of this video. And if you've missed any of these videos, I'll post a link down in the description. You can check out the entire playlist. Now, Scott and Nikki's home theater was actually the last home that we were visiting during this four day trip. And so honestly, Tony and I were just absolutely spent. I mean, we were exhausted, but we were excited to see our final home theater. And so before we even get into the home theater part, I just want to give a big thanks to Nikki and Scott, man, we get there and we just hang out for a little bit. And they said, we hope you're hungry. And we were like, yeah, we're starving. And they said, uh, good, because we've cooked a meal for you. And man, they had cooked this, uh, and I'm going to mess it up. So I'm not even going to to say what it was, but it was almost like a roast. It was cooked in a bag and just kind of steamed. I think Scott said he had cooked it for like 14 hours or something. Oh my goodness, man. Super delicious. Absolutely hit the spot. And, uh, and then after we hung out for a little bit, gathered all the gear, we headed into the theater room, or actually even before we went into the theater room, uh, just got everything set up and and uh, then we were ready to go. And so Scott proceeds to show me, um, you know, he, he did the same thing he did with in the video is he starts to take me downstairs to the basement, which is kind of what I expected because everybody in Wisconsin, everybody in Illinois has basements, it seems like, for their home theaters. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. I don't have, I don't have a theater room in the basement. And then he walks over to this bookshelf and he goes, now, hang on a second. I got to And he knocks on it. He pulls out this book and pushes on it. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, man. A, a, a hidden home theater. This is cool. Now, what an entrance. And so we go inside and man, this thing is enormous. I wish I would have taken a, uh, a real wide shot of Scott's room, man. Um, and kind of speaking of that, I know Tony and I were looking at it. We're like, man, how tall are your ceilings? He's like, I think you said they were 10 feet. Guys, my theater room's 10 feet. And I'm looking up and I'm going, there's no stinking way your room is 10 feet. You must have measured wrong. You must have, uh, you know, you must have forgotten how tall they were. And so we were going back and forth. And he's like, I promise, guys, it's 10 foot. So he goes in there, he gets the tape measure. And I mean, it's very, very close to 10 foot. And I'm like, I'll be dang. I'm thinking, that's crazy because his room just looks enormous. Just, I don't know if it's because of the way it's laid out, of course. His room is a lot wider than mine. Mine's only 13 feet by 19. I think his is like 26 feet deep by 17 feet wide. It's got these just, just a, it's just really, really spacious. I mean, you know, of course the ceiling's black, so that always opens up a room, but man, it's just an enormous room and you walk in and, and I see these lights kick on. I'm like, what the heck? And he begins to show me that, man, I installed these little, kind of like little white sensors. And so when they sense, um, you know, movement near the, the uh, step down, um, he's got some LED lights that light up. And I'm like, man, that's genius, you know, because especially if you're walking through at night, I mean, you could take a pretty nasty spill and heaven forbid you actually knock over a speaker, man. That would be, that'd be a bad, I mean, it's one thing to get a, uh, you know, a knot on your head, but it's another thing to damage your speakers. 
um, in the process. And so, uh, but that thought that was super cool. Scott just did some really, really neat things again with the DIY. He shows us his screen. And, and so originally I'm thinking, you know, his screen seems a bit high. I mean, it's up above his front speakers. And, and, uh, but when we sat down in his theater seats, of course, as soon as you actually not even before, not even when you lean back, but even just sitting there, his seats kind of lean back a little bit further than my seats do. And so even just sitting there, my eyes were just straight, you know, in line with the, the screen, even though it was a little bit higher than what you would typically maybe uh, mount one, but it worked out perfect for his room. And then he shows us, you know, he's got a little remote control and he's like, watch this. He's like, gee, you know, the screen starts to lower and so he built it that way so that he can accommodate for any size screen. That's pretty stinking awesome. Uh, you know, and my setup is a little different, you know, cause I'll have, you know, gray bars bleed on top and bottom. You gotta, you kinda gotta get creative with lens memory and Scott's like, I'll just, I'll build something cool. And uh, so having a motorized screen that can handle various aspect ratios, man, that's, that's super, super cool. And then because the JVC has, I think like 10 installation modes, like 10 of these lens memory options, he can set it up for however he wants and you know position that image exactly where it's supposed to be. And so I'm like, man, that is super, super cool. So I'd never seen that in a theater room. He's got these massive bass traps that he installed and built himself. Um, and I always applaud anybody that can build anything because I'm not super handy myself. I have to rely on friends and family members that are, you know, kind of gifted in those areas to help me with my theater room when it comes to construction. But he was able to make those. And then his um, diffusion panels on the wall, guys. So those look kind of familiar. They look just like the ones that Joe uh, from Joe and Tell has in his studio, you know, when he's doing our podcasts and stuff. But the cool thing is Scott was like, you know, I want to make these kind of different. And so he builds and constructs just this little kind of corner. Um, let's just say not platform. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. Basically, it's just some real thin pieces of wood. He covers it, um, places those four panels on there. So they're kind of angled, at like almost like a triangle. And man, it just looks really, really sick in there. I mean, I love the, the aesthetics of that and it definitely added a lot of diffusion to the room. Um, you know, because he had a flat ceiling, so that's a big, massive area up there. Um, so there is some sound that reflects in there, but what we found was especially like for, he played us some demos of um, kind of like these horror movies, you know, suspenseful movies. Dude, his room is perfect for that because it adds some extra reverb. It adds some extra spaciousness. And so when you're in a room, man, it's just like you're looking around for the, the creepy critters to come grab you. You know what I'm saying? So it was just, it was just really, really uh, incredible on that. Um, having all of his main speakers, his front wides, his side surrounds and rear surrounds being towers, that just provided a really, really immersive experience. Um, so that was cool. I love how he did that. And then he also had the uh, the Velcro straps. That was really interesting and just a great way to hide some speaker wires. And so he mentioned in the video that he initially, when he built his theater room, he wasn't planning on doing, I think, the front wides, but he wanted to add them later on. But he's thinking, man, how do I hide the wire? And so he just got some really wide Velcro uh, kind of like tape, Velcro strips, and man, just Velcroed it to the carpet. And unless I was shining a light down there, you'd never see it, never see it. It's off in the corners, it's dark. I'm like, dang, man, so many little things that I'm learning from each one of you guys in your home theaters, man, just creative ways that you've got around either issues that you had in your room or things that you wanted to, to do in your room. And you're like, hmm, what could I do? and you figure out a way to do that. And so I think that's one of the most valuable things that I'm personally getting from this series of videos is just seeing how other people kind of handle obstacles and handle problems in their room and, and uh, you know, situations that they've got. So man, definitely that was super, super cool. Um, and of course he's got his iPad, which I'm jealous, man. You guys are like streaming your music on there and you're going through your demos and I'm gonna get there one day, I, I really will. 
But he's able to do that, and, and we're listening to music, just one song after another after another, and then we do the movie demos, and I mean, he never gets up and goes to the Blu-ray player, 4K player, and I'm like, oh man, one day, like I said, one day I'll get there. But, uh, but man, it was just such a seamless experience, um, very spacious room, like I said, he's got room for, I think there's what, four seats in the front, five in the back, I believe, or three and four maybe, so he's got seven seats. So that's, I mean, a great amount of people. I mean, most of the time in my theater room, a lot of times, honestly, it's me, uh, me, maybe and a friend or me and a family member, my son or my son and his wife or whoever. Very rarely do I fill this room up with even six seats. Um, so, but he's got the, the ability to, you know, to house or handle uh, quite a few guests in that. The HTP1 monolith uh, did a phenomenal job processing the surround sound as well as music, Oro 3D. Um, we tried a bunch of different up mixers just to see how they sounded. Um, and uh, we're just enjoying our time together, man. Um, oh, another thing. So having, having his uh, subwoofers up front and back, man, that just provides a really, really smooth experience, bass experience from seat to seat. And so, you know, a lot of times Tony and I would kind of switch because I'd be in the the center seat and I'd be listening to something. I'm like, Tony, you got to hear this, man. And so we had switched seats and, you know, the the uh, the vocals would change a little bit because you're getting off axis at that point. So it'd be a little bit different experience there, but the bass response would still remain really smooth. And so that's another benefit of having multiple subwoofers in your room, spacing them out in the room and then using something like a mini DSP to kind of flatten that response out and and get good seat to seat coverage but um, man just overall just another incredibly well done home theater um, absolutely it was a different experience for me um, you know being in that big of a room that high of ceilings uh, a little bit more like I said lively um, and then combining that with a bunch of diffusion and as well as some absorption and just a great, great overall sound. And, and Scott and Nikki, y'all were such gracious hosts. And again, man, thank you so much. Oh, they even surprised me with a birthday cake for my birthday. So that was pretty dope. That was fantastic. I, was, I forgot all about that. But uh, so definitely, man, we just had a good time hanging out with you and Nikki. And your home theater is rocking. And uh, even on the outside, he's got the little sign that he can put a movie poster digitally just so many little touches to his home theater just to make it just a really, really great experience, not only for him and Nikki, but also for friends as well as family that come over to enjoy a theater in their setup. So guys, I hope you're enjoying these. I'll have another brand new home theater tour tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you've got an awesome home theater and you want to submit that to me for a possibility of me coming up and uh, doing a home theater just like this one uh, at your place, make sure you head over to hometheatertours.com and fill out the uh, you know your information and I can get back with you and see if maybe somehow we can make that arrangement a reality. And uh, also we've got some home theater tours merch, so if you're interested in that, Definitely, that's a great way to support the channel. Or if you want to become a patron, you can check out all those details down in the description. Well, guys, I hope you have a blessed week. Love y'all. Appreciate you more than you'll ever know. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.